Well, hello everybody. This is Dusty from the Fellowship Committee and I am here with Kay and Dave Farrar and we are enjoying a lovely afternoon before Memorial Weekend here in their great home in Gayville, USA. <laughs> and I can't wait to hear more about them. Thank you so much for letting us come into your home and get to know you a little bit better. Thanks for coming all the way out here. Yes. You betcha. <laughs> There's a great little just a plug for Gayville, there's a great little concert hall here in town that has yes. wonderful concerts on Friday night. So yeah. if anybody ever wants to venture out mm -hmm. this way, it's a pretty, pretty nice little place. Yeah. Lots of history in there. Yes. Um, so first question is, when did you become a member of our church and what influenced you to join our church? We joined, uh, became official members November 7th. 2004. I looked it up before you came. Well, thank you. Because <laughs> we couldn't remember anymore. <laughs> um, what influenced us? Well, I might have to say, first of all, my, my mom was like, have you guys not joined a church yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> so then we kind of more so seriously started looking, and there's two small churches here in Gayville, and they were small. Yeah, and we went to each one of them. And, yeah, and, tried them out. Yeah. We, we could have felt comfortable, I guess, but I think I was looking for a little bit bigger. One was a religion Dave didn't want to try or go back to, maybe I should yeah, say. Yeah, go back to. Yeah. <laughs> so then we headed to Yankton, and was this the first church in Yankton we, we went to? I think to? it's the only church in Yankton. Yeah, because it's UCC, and that's where you that's came where from. That's where I came and, from, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And you knew people that were there. Yeah. Love trip people. That's my hometown. All right, trip. So it felt like home. Yeah. You know? And I made it feel like home for Dave. <laughs> yeah. Well, I needed a church. You know, you need that. And you know, mm -hmm. it's like an anchor in your life. And, and, and I wanted something. And when I went in there, the first time in there, we felt I felt so welcome. Me too. And, and so... We did too. Uh, yeah. yeah the, the, it wasn't like people are, there's nobody new over there. You know, I just felt happy. So it was easy to, to, to join that church. Yeah, so, agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed, yeah. yeah. All right, so um, if you had the ability to give your younger self advice or to give advice to anyone listening or your grandkids, their great-grandkids that will watch this down the road since it will be in the cloud, whatever that is, <laughs> um, for all eternity as opposed to our little books that we <laughs> used to just get a picture. Yeah. Um, what, what advice would you each give? I would say be patient. Be patient. We met each other later on in life, but up until that point, I remember thinking, I am never going to meet anybody, and that's okay, I guess, now, you know, but then all of a sudden, just like that, he came along, and so if, if I'd have just known, I could have been more patient because I probably... I didn't get close to the altar, but, you know, I dated some guys that you keep thinking, well, there's nothing wrong with them. Why why shouldn't I, you know, stick with this guy? But anyway, I didn't, and, you know, the rest is history, as they say. So I'd say just practice patience. What's supposed to happen will happen, and you can pray about it. Before I met Dave, my sister-in-law told me, to that she had read i think in the reader's digest that where a lady put a note under her pillow for a year that asked god to bring her a husband so at that point i thought well can't hurt to try so i wrote me a little note that mm. said please send me a man who loves me who has a job <laughs> bingo <laughs> yeah and bingo got one yeah <laughs> after about a year but you know it came to fruition. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Good advice. But my, my advice for, for futures, I was, uh, growing up back home, there was a, a pasture that I would drive by going back and forth to work. And out in the middle of this pasture was a sign that just said, bloom where you were planted. Uh -huh. There was nothing else out there, just that. And that is, if you look in the back of that, those books, that's mm -hmm. that's what's there. Oh, yeah. And, and that has become my motto, just do the best wherever you're at, and that's it. You Wonderful. know, yeah, wherever it takes you, it takes you. Just bloom where you were planted. And you 
to do that. You yeah. really do. I think that's what a lot of my friends thought because I did used to live in Sioux Falls as a single person and a lot of them were like, you're going to move to where? <laughs> so, yeah, it, did, it didn't matter. I mean, if you have good reason to there come, you you'll make the best of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, how did you two meet? Well, it was uh, when I when I when I came out here to move to to uh, South Dakota. From where? From from Canton, Ohio. Oh, that's where I grew up. Home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and, and that <laughs> I I uh, got a job at Kohlberg's in, in Yankton there, and uh, worked with a guy that lived in Vermilion, and he was a hunter. And I, I loved hunting, you know, and to come to South, South Dakota where they had millions of pheasants and antelopes and other things, I got the opportunity to hunt with him and his best friend, Norm, who happened to be Mary Duque's cousin. First cousin. Yeah, first cousin. Oh. And probably after about eight years of hunting together, she said, you know, would you, would you be interested in meeting someone you know, and that's a, just like Kay had said earlier, I had reached that point in my life where I said, I'm going to be alone. I'm happy. I'm comfortable with that. I don't need anyone. And so I thought, well, it never hurts to meet somebody. And the, it took me about three weeks before I got up the guts to call her. And, uh, but we talked for over two hours, I think, that first, the first call. The first yeah. call we ever made. And it was just, and that was uh, what, early November. That was in October. October. Oh, I thought, okay. Our first date first was, date was November. Yeah. Okay. okay. And, and I proposed on, on uh, New Year's Eve. And we got married in April. Yeah. It just, you just knew. I just knew it was You right. know, you're the second or third mm -hmm. couple that I've talked to that have done that that quickly. Yeah. I think Bob and Shelly went kind of fast. Yes. If I yeah. remember hearing theirs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I surprised my family back home because, well, first thing... I was the one that was never going to leave home, you know. I was all of a sudden I, I moved a thousand miles away. Then I call my sister and say, "Hey, you won't believe I got a new family," and that kind of made her mad. She goes, well, "What's wrong with your old family?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I'm sitting beside her going, "Oh my gosh, you said that yeah. I haven't even met them yet," you know. <laughs> but, but she has become best friends with Kay, so really? they, they get yeah. along so well. I can't and imagine any yeah. different. Yeah, so this. It's one of them things, you know, how, how did things happen that this happened, that happened, this happened, this happened, all to get here, you know? It's, it's weird. It's yeah, because really my cousin that asked him if he'd been interested in meeting somebody was at my younger sister's wedding. Um, that happened in August. And we were welcome back to our hotel rooms, her and her husband and me, to another room. <laughs> and she stopped me and said, Hey, would you be interested in a blind date? And I, you know, your heart just sinks. I'm like, uh, no. But then something said, oh, they never, they never go through with that. You know, I've had more people tell me in my life, would you like to, would you be interested in a blind date? And you'd say, yeah. And then nobody ever showed up, called, or yeah, nobody follows through. So I said, okay. Just and in the that minute. I gave her my phone number so she could give it to Dave, and she gave me Dave's phone number, I think, to give it to me. And then, so that was August, and he didn't call until October, so I already thought then, too, that <laughs> that was not going to happen either, you know. But he said he had to wait till after hunting season or whatever. Yeah. So. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, when he did call, those two hours went fast, and... I'm not good at carrying on a conversation with a man. I I talk all I have to talk about is family, and nobody's really interested, especially those first dates, you know. But since he didn't have a family here, I think that's why he thought the conversation mm -hmm. was fine. And where did you go on your first date? We went to the Ground Round wow. in Sioux Falls. Oh, it's not there I anymore. Remember that. Do you? I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Did place. we do a movie? It was. was. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then we went to a double feature. Oh, yeah. The spy that did. Spider did something wrong or something. Or, what about Bob? But anyway. Yeah, anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. But we thought we were going to do a double feature in case we wouldn't have anything to talk about. <laughs> that's, that's cool. 
so you got married where? In Sioux Falls okay. at First United Church in okay. right on Minnesota Avenue. Oh yeah, yep, 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 yeah, yeah. Beautiful windows. Did your family come out? Yeah. It was an interesting wedding. She had 250 people on her side of the church, and I had 12 on mine. <laughs> oh, my God. No, goodness. we didn't split. But that's about as no. many as I had versus yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. I, I married into half the state here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, yeah, that was my first time meeting them is when they came for the wedding. Oh, wow. Yeah. But he's got a nice family, so it wasn't a problem. Families my family's were quite a bit alike. Yeah, really. Yeah, that's, that's nice. And did you have a reception at the church? Uh, nope. We had it at some place in T. Yeah. I oh. forgot what they called it. All in T. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So then we got to drive in a, or ride in a limo out to T. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And did you go on a honeymoon? Yeah. We did. We went out to the hills. Oh, wow. Some friends of mine have a cabin out there near Hill City. Uh-huh. A little A-frame cabin, which is really neat, that I'd been getting to go to for years with my friend. Well, then they let us use it for our honeymoon, and yeah. we stayed out about a week, I think, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. And the weather was perfect. I think it's the only time in, in April the weather has been that good out there. Yeah, yeah. It's like That's seven wonderful. Degrees. Yeah, it was cool. We enjoyed yeah. it. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Wonderful. So, when you were in school in Canton, did you live in the city? Did you live outside of the city? We lived, uh, well, outside the city, but the city's never in back. That's in the Rust Belt of Ohio. Okay. There. And, and, uh, yeah, I lived in Perry Township. And uh, just one month, well, yeah, but grade school was a block and a half away from us. The junior high school was a, a quarter mile away from us. And the high school, the, the, yeah, the high school was one mile away. So I walked all 12 years to school. I walked to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and we didn't have sidewalks either, so it was dodging cars all the time. Oh boy. Yeah, that's that was that's my uneventful twelve years. <laughs> Did you play any sports? Or? Baseball. I okay. Was, I, I played little league baseball. All I right. Was, I, was, I enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. That's the only the only thing I the only sport I took part in. And what'd your dad and mom do? Dad was a uh, carpenter. And uh, worked in construction. He, he started out as just a carpenter. Then he ended up in construction. He worked on uh, for a company that did built bridges for highways. Oh wow! And uh, he actually worked on the Pro Football Hall of Fame. There the, you go. Yeah, he was he was the supervisor for putting up the the dome on top of it that looks like a football. So wow. Yeah, and I just remember riding all around town with him. He'd say, "I worked on that building. I worked on that building. I worked on that building." You know, that's interesting. And mom was uh, mom was a home mom, okay. and she did some part time work as in the, in the church office ah. where I belonged to church. All so. right, and you had how many siblings? I had a brother and a sister. Then uh, for three months out of the year, we're I'll be seventy one, he'll be seventy two, she'll be seventy three. Oh. We're right in a row. <laughs> His mom was busy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And what about you? Where'd you grow up? You grew up in Trip or? On a farm outside okay. of Trip, but went to country school first for the first seven years and two weeks of eighth grade. And then they rezoned things, so then I had to go to town school in the eighth grade. Okay. But then went to Trip High School. We didn't have middle school on okay. Trip. Okay. And then I went to college for two years. I took a, an executive secretarial degree in uh, Springfield, USD ah, Springfield. Right, right? Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, those skills lasted, what, about two years or so, and then computers came in, so that was <laughs> kind of useless, but anyway, I, I, was, I was probably more interested in partying than studying anyway, so. <laughs> I see. And did you work? Um, yeah. I worked, oh, well, when we were kids, you work on the farm, of course, you know, chores and yeah. helping out in the field, whatever you got to do. I wasn't much of an indoor person. I, I liked being outside more so. So that's why it was good to marry Dave because he likes to cook. He's a good cook. All right. I might not mind cooking, but I'm not very good at it. So, <laughs> um, And then my first job in town was working at the bowling alley in Trip. And otherwise I did babysitting before then. And we used to have a 
cucumber station, a pickle station, and trip get me pickles. And so we grew pickles on our farm, and you could pick them, take them to this get me station and trip, and then they have this sorter thing that sorts out the different sizes of pickles, and you get paid so much for this size, so much for that size, you know. And oh, wow. So that's how I made some school clothes money. Okay. And fair money. You gotta have fair money. Because Tripp used to have the Hutch Hutchinson County Fair. That was a big deal. And then when I went to college, I worked part-time there on campus over the summer. And, and then I went to Sioux Falls. Got my job there. Yeah. Mm. And where did you... Did you work when you were in high school and stuff? No, but not until I got out of high school. I, I, I graduated when I was 17 because they had, had the, you know, you, I was born the day after Christmas, so as long as oh. it was before New Year's, I could start that year. My first job was at Ar Arby's. Aha. Uh -huh. So, yeah. That was, before we haven't even heard of them around yeah. here, she <laughs> saw us. Yeah. Best yeah. thing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's all they had was and a mocha sandwich. And mocha shakes. Yeah, Ooh. my favorite. Love it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And so I worked so, there for one year, okay. and, and then I, I did I did go to uh, Fairmont State College in Fairmont, West Virginia, for one year, but I I never really learned how to study right, and I just didn't take things very seriously. So it was kind of fun for a year, and then oh okay, <laughs> gotta go find something else to do. So I, I, and how did you find Colberts? Well, that's that's uh, I I after after. After not going back to college, I ended up working in a car wash. Uh, it was a hand-operated car wash in, in Canada, scrubbing tires and doing interior cleaning and, and that, because I just, I didn't ever see the future, you know? I just, mm -hmm. just that, and, uh, but then as I got a little older, I realized, oh, maybe there is a life out here, and the guy needs to do something, and, and I got a job as, as, a, as a timekeeper at a business in, in, um, in Yankton. It was owned by the same corporation that owned Colbert's out here. You didn't get a timekeeper in Yankton, you were a timekeeper Okay, in yeah, Canton. Canton, Canton Yankton, the O and in O N. So it's <laughs> good. So, but yeah, I did that and uh, we went out of business because the forgings got a little, it was a forging place, you know, okay. with the hammers, boom, 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 yep. everybody, what, what? Can't hear anything. And uh, when we went out of business, uh, the vice president of the corporation came down there, and uh, at the year after we were out of business, he asked if I would be interested in coming out here to Yankton uh, because they were moving a, a part of the corporation from Minneapolis down to here. Oh. So I thought, you know, why not? If I, if I don't like it, I can go back. If I don't do it, I'll always wonder what if. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ended up out here. And then that's when I was 36. So. Okay. I, I, I wasted quite a few years in between high school and then. But. You know, I think you made up for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made up for yeah, it. Yeah, I, I know. I was uh, just, yeah, I, when I got here, I said, this is it. This is the place. That's what it I is, be. it yeah. is the place. Yeah. I've really enjoyed yeah. Yeah. being here. Yeah, South Dakota? Yes. Yeah. Nebraska? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Yankton. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 So, um, your grandparents, what did they, uh, probably yours K farmed, yeah, right? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Yep, and my, by the time I knew them, well, back up a little bit, my Weiser, that's my maiden name, okay. grandparents, I never knew. Okay. My dad came from a large family, and he was the second to the youngest, so by the time I came around, his parents were already gone. Then my mom's side, I knew both of the grandparents, but by the time I was old enough to know my grandpa, he had had TB oh, that he contracted from World War One, And so he was sick the whole time I knew him. But before that, yes, they did farm. And there were four girls in the family. So the girls helped on the farm. Um, my mom wanted to go to high school. She got to go like one year. Then her dad said, I need you back at home. So then he said the next year she could go, and she didn't want to because she was embarrassed. She'd think she thought her classmates would think she flunked, and that that's why she couldn't be in their class anymore. So you know, really all her life, I think it was a low self-esteem thing that she 
didn't have that high school education, and so many of her friends and relatives did. And my dad only had a eighth grade education. So it, you know, when, when he, you know, being the second to the youngest, he had a younger brother and two older brothers that got to go to the, got to go to the war, but he did not qualify something with his health. So okay. he stayed home and took over the, with his mom, because his mom was still living at that time and stayed on the farm. And then when he got married to mom, they lived at dad's mom's for a year. And then, I can't remember, I think the youngest brother came home. And so he was the one wanting to take over that farm. And then mom and dad left and found their farm near Trip. That's okay. where they started out. And well, that's about, we're, we're German Russians. Okay. On both sides. Wow. So, you know, we, we have a lot of similarities. And then your family is German, right? Half German. Half German. What's the other half? Scotch. Oh, yeah, Scotch. And shot in a beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But you so, had yeah. a good story about your grandparents. Well, Grandma and Grandpa Swartz. Yeah. The, yeah, Grandpa taught me how to hunt and, and my appreciation. I, I like guns, you know, not just just for hunting. I like guns. And uh, Grandma taught me how to how to love people and to just be a good person and how to cook. And I, I spent a lot of time with Grandma, not Grandma and Grandpa, but and not that I didn't you know learn all that with Mom, you know, all that stuff. But just mm -hmm. she's when I think of things that I remember her more. Than anything, the way the influence she's had on me, mm -hmm. she really taught me a lot. And my dad's dad was also a carpenter, so oh, yeah. Okay. But uh, am I, what am I missing? <laughs> You're what about your grandpa and grandma Farrar? That's Where's grandpa. That's grandpa Farrar. He was he came Where from, are they from he well from Maine. And, yeah. Oh. Uh, in New Brunswick actually, and originally with some okay. some connections up there, and they moved to Ohio. I, I didn't know Grandma Farrar. She died, I, I think, before I was actually born. And, and he had two other wives after that. But, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't like Mom's family. My uh -huh. Mom's family was really my influence. So, yeah. yeah it, it seems like in my family history, a lot of people moved from the New England area to Ohio. And I, yeah. I would really like to know how that all kind of came about. Yeah, Yeah, I, I, I learned that my great-grandfather came there and it's, uh, to work on the canals, I guess, yeah. is what he did. Okay. And then my great-grandmother came from uh, South Carolina. She came over from Germany as an in, like an indentured servant. Oh. And when she was done, she came up and I don't know how they ever met or anything, but this furniture right behind mm -hmm. us here, that was theirs that was my great That's grandparents beautiful. sideboard yeah but, uh, yeah so and you and your grandpa worked on it or you and your yeah we, we refinished it yeah we, we cleaned it up refinished it and, and he brought yeah. it all the way from ohio yeah <laughs> that's great yeah that's that's it's a nice piece yeah. it really is yeah it really I like is. it so something surprising about you that people wouldn't know But no, oh. <laughs> I coached. I coached a little yeah, league team you. back in Ohio, and then we won the city championship. There you so, go. Yeah, yeah. That was a big deal. Yeah, there were nine and ten year olds, and they were just learning the game. And they probably were just on top of the world. Yeah. When you won. Yep. Yep. That's probably something they'll always remember. Yeah. The, the, the thing that, that I remember the most out of all of it is the, my buddy and I that did that. Neither one of us had kids. So that was the first question a parent asked you when they when they brought your kids you, uh, to the practice. You know, uh -huh. Which one's yours? I don't have one. Oh, then they were all happy. Uh -huh. But you wouldn't have to worry about the coach's kid getting the practice. Right, yeah. right, yeah. So, exactly. And, and the, the philosophy was, what I grew up with playing ball was my first coaches just taught us how to play the game. You didn't, there was no stress on winning or no shame in losing. Just learn how to play the game. And that's what we did. And the kids had fun, and they turned out to be winners. Yeah, you know, it was it was really that's good. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yep. So yeah, I'm a coach. 
Yeah. <laughs> From way back, huh? Have you thought um, of anything? Well, speaking of ball playing, I didn't play in high school, but I played when I moved to Sioux Falls. Um, I got on a league with some oh. friends that played on a league, and well, I must have played five, six years, maybe. Had a lot of fun. Yep. I enjoyed it immensely. I was the catcher. All right. Yeah, I think they always say short people should be the catcher, <laughs> so that's probably why I had to do that. But anyway, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Otherwise, in high school, no sports, but we really didn't have anything for women anyway for sports then. Yeah. Um, but I was in band and chorus, and maybe it would surprise people to know that I played the baritone. It's not yeah. really a girl type instrument, but that's the way the cookies fell when I asked what I could play or what I might want to play. And I did enjoy the sound of it, so I enjoyed it. It's just that it was really big. And I made all state chorus. You'd never know that now, but there you go. Yeah, that that'd be the biggest surprise to most people now, because <laughs> talk about being out of practice. It's tough when you don't use those. It is vocal cords it anymore. Is. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. I, I'm blaming it on sinus infections, by the way. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. That's probably. I don't know. Did that surprise you? Yeah, okay. all of that surprised me. Baritone really surprised me. <laughs> when I went to our band director, because in the eighth grade I got to go to town school, and so I asked mom and dad, I said, now that I'm in town school, can I play in band, you know? Well, I suppose, then we don't have to make an extra trip into town if we were still, if I was still in country school. So anyway, the band director, I went to see him, and you would rent an instrument. Right, I remember and that. And he said, what do you think you'd like? And I said, I'm thinking something brass. I, I'm not a flute, oboe, clarinet type of girl. I do like brass. So he kind of jumped on that and he said, have you considered the baritone? I said, no, because I don't know what it is. <laughs> but they needed baritone players in the uh -huh. band. And so, yeah, I, once he, he played it for me you know, and I could hear what it sounded like, I, I liked it. So, but the case was like a coffin <laughs> size, you know, and I rode the bus, so you had to take your horn home to practice, and that was such a hassle, getting that big old case on the bus and off the books, and mom and dad made me practice it out in the cow barn, because <laughs> <laughs> it was noisy. Yeah. Was Did the wild. cows like it? Um, they weren't in there, you know, they'd be out in the pasture because oh, okay. it was summer when they made me go out there, okay. at least it wasn't right. winter time. All right. Well, they say that cows love music really? and you should go out and play them. There's all kinds of videos <laughs> that oh, you can see. Oh, it's probably if you milk the cows then. Is that for milking or not? No, just they just come anything? right out from the field and we'll just stand there and watch you. No kidding. They love it, yeah. Maybe it was my playing. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Kept them away. I don't know. <laughs> Probably kept your folks away. Yeah. <laughs> I know my violin did. Oh, it did. Oh, uh, gosh. And my son, he played. How did he play something, but it was awful. <laughs> Pink trumpet. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> he didn't keep up with that too long. Thank did you. Did you keep up with the violin? Not really, no. Nope. Mm -hmm. nope. You know, back when I was a kid and in trip, we never even heard of a violin available to play in trip school. You know, it was... Yeah. There was no orchestra type of instruments mm -hmm. there. So, yeah. yeah. Brass or reeds or drums. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, something that changed your life. Well, this is pretty obvious, you know, after yes. so Moving many years. Here. Yeah. We did have a, a sad family situation, sad slash bad, um, within my family. And that, I would say, changed my thinking about, how do I say it, mental illness. Okay. By, uh, just from day to night, difference in thinking, I just, didn't know the extents and what all is classified as a mental illness. And so, yeah, it was, a, and that's been since we were married too, but 
not that long, what, about a year into our marriage or so? Not too long. Yeah, um, and I don't know if anybody in my family's going to see this, but no, anyways, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, we'll just let that go yeah. for yeah. who yeah. it was and so. When things like that happen, yeah. it's a whole new world. It is. And, and figuring out how to navigate it. Yes. It's Bingo. very Yeah. We very went to see some opening. counselors. Um, we were both working for Sherco at the time, and they had um, EAP, Employee Assistance Program. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I just didn't know what to do, you know. How do we help the most? And so they told us, you know. I mean, I suppose just telling them kind of gets it off your chest a little bit too. and mm -hmm. But they were a big help. So mm -hmm. I would be a definite advocate for seeing somebody who can help you in the mental health area any time you think you, even if you don't think you need it, you know, maybe somebody yeah. else will tell you you need it, I don't know, but yeah, should go, they know what they're talking about. Yeah, I think a lot of situations like we've had over the last week could yeah. be avoided if that kind of thing would happen and there wasn't such a stigma right attached to it um, but because somehow we think we fail when there's something that we can't navigate on our own yeah and but you know, I mean we learned an awful lot that I would have had no idea happens before the event actually occurs I never ever would have guessed so yeah unfortunately People got hurt, and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But I'd say that was probably my huge, maybe a little more than marrying you was a <laughs> piece of cake to yeah, that navigate. That, that was a yeah. pretty positive thing <laughs> yeah. that changed your yeah. life. And, yes. and, a, and a part of my thing was I didn't realize it so much till I got till I moved out here that most of the time I was I was not living my life for me back home it was all involved with other people you know and, mm -hmm. and doing what other people wanted to do and when I came out here to be independent it was I liked it you know I didn't have to take care of anybody but myself or didn't have to worry about what anybody else was done it sounds kind of selfish but you know it was I'm going to live my life I don't you know I think back on it I really didn't have Dave's life mm -hmm. until I came out here and then, then it it got even better. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. answer. Yeah. <laughs> Great answer. Great answer. Well, you two have just been a joy to talk to. Um, anything else that you want to share? How has how has Yankton UCC impacted your lives as a couple? Big time. Yeah. Gave me back that base that I needed to you know, you do all the stuff you do out here, but you need that like family, that faith base to to know you're doing the right things or to be with people that make you feel good. You know, Is that. there anything that the two of you have done while you've been there that you feel has really helped the direction of the church? I don't think we're that impactful. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I see you two as being very, like, involved in the direction of things. We we we, well, we, we, we may get involved, but we don't we don't drive the truck. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm not really right. a leader. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm more of a follower, but I I don't want to follow the wrong way. I'm definitely for. Not the word modernizing, but I, you know, all the things we've becoming open and affirming. If there was anything we could do for that, yes. If there's um, coming up fundraising for the office structure, which you know, thought we kind of had that handle on that, but don't <laughs> didn't after all. You know, I want that. I want to see us. Jacqueline has just made us grow. I know that, yeah, some people have left, but they don't want to go in the direction that I think the church, that we want the church to go into, mm -hmm. at least anyway. Not that I dislike those people, and I would love to have them come back, but everybody's got their own 
thing that they want to do. So yeah. pass. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah, and the, you know, never in my wildest dreams would have I guessed I'd be married to a man who would read devotions with me, um, you know, be be faithful with me instead of just me being the only one or him just being the only one and there I go crying. But <laughs> get it. Yeah, it's a, so together, you know, we we are headed in the same direction and I think my first uh, committee or team was deacons. So that was 14, 15 years ago. And now I'm on deacons again. And, you know, with the right leadership, with Jacqueline, she comes to every uh, committee meeting and stuff and keeps us on the path of doing what we should be doing to keep the church alive and I really enjoyed that and even 14 years ago I don't remember if it was Carl Klein at the time was the pastor or if we already had an interim of Rick but I remember Lee Gass was the chairperson of the deacons at that time and I was as green as green could be coming <laughs> on to that and so he you know like for the first time we were gonna pass out communion because that was back when we had the bread and the wine separately, he took us into the church and gave us a little class on how it gets done. And, you know, he made me feel comfortable rather than all nervous about what's going to happen Sunday. And that was a really good thing. And um, Dan Somson is chairperson now, and he reminds me of Lee. He, if he doesn't know something, he'll find out and make sure the rest of us know what's going on and so it's those committees I know it's a an old cliche maybe and I've heard it from all these other people who have you've interviewed but if I would have never gotten on the board of deacons or any other ministry team at that time which was after we were in the church a year I'm sure we would not be on this path no I just don't think so we've gotten to know so many people mm -hmm. they've gotten to know us and mm -hmm. It's the way to go. It really is, in, in my opinion. I know not everybody has the time, and now that I'm retired, I, I almost feel more guilty saying that. <laughs> but yeah, it's a. If you don't get involved, you can still have your faith. I get that, but my faith has really grown yeah. because of that. I know it has. The church is not a building, it is the people. Absolutely. We have a good church. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Well, thank you, too, for sharing this time yeah. with all of us and and letting me come out here and just get sure. to know you better, besides Crystal Gale. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was going to say yeah. something that's right about the right. most yeah. impactful moment was when we got to go see Crystal yeah. Gale. <laughs> I just love the both of you so much. Oh, you helped me, love me too. feel yeah. really comfortable. Good. And uh, that that is highly appreciated. You are so. highly welcome. Yes. But thank you. It goes both ways that yes. street. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to say goodbye. Huh? Bye. <laughs> Bye.